Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're about to take a little trip. So I figure now that the roads have been cleared, spring is now here, 14th of March every year, the weather starts to turn spring. Even though it doesn't officially happen until the 21st, please understand it's always roughly about the 14th of March every year. We got a lot to talk about. In the background, you hear a little bit of jazz, but this is not just the regular jazz, because, see, I can't stand jazz. Sorry, I ain't that old yet. Um, what I mean by I can't stand jazz, I only like the jazz where I'm familiar with the songs, I'm familiar with the melodies, familiar with the tunes, and you guys are going to find that with most of the melodies and tunes in this little jazz rendition, is that it's of songs you've heard of before. Now, we got a lot of people asking, what do I do now? This is um, Lana Ritchie um, to his song. Okay, just in case some of y'all weren't aware of this. And so that's why I said I need music I'm familiar with. And it's got me pausing. But I'm, I'm not going to pause too much because it's, it's just, you know, got the words going on in my head. That's what it does to me, y'all. People have been, I got my arbitration of what? What I do with it now? It's sitting right here. See? Arbitration of what? What I do with it? Do I just hold it like this and say, hey, I got my arbitration of what? <laughs> this is mine. It's all mine. <laughs> all right. What, what I do? Ladies and gentlemen, now that you have gone through the arbitration process, you've got your contract together, you filled out all the pertinent information, you sent it out to the party, and the other party and you, you know, you had a relationship with the other party, and you say, hey, 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 guys, <laughs> the terms of the contract, especially those of you with mortgages, especially those of you with mortgages, excuse me, especially those of you with mortgages. You see, the banks do something that we were able to prove in the Boeing credit union case where they said they issued an internal credit. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the so-called vapor money the courts were talking about. Yeah, they issue an internal credit. Remember, credit is currency in the United States. And when they issued the internal credit, they never told the borrower. But wait a minute, hold on. They're the collective agency. They're the collective entity. They are the custodian of record. Of course, they were supposed to let the borrower know that there was some adjustments or some changes made to their accounting structure. But the borrower has to let them know that I am now exercising all rights under the contract. The waiver of rights were done without full knowledge and or my full consent. So I would draw any waiver. People are not doing that. They're not allowing it to be a matter of contract. But we are. We're saying, hey, 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 here you go. Thank you for your offer. We accept that offer. But we accept it under these following terms and conditions. Oh, by the way, if you disagree with this, you just have to let us know. But in the mince time, that's right, I said in the mince time, what you need to do is you need to provide answers to these questions. They're called proof of claim. So you need to prove that these things aren't so. Now, if you can't prove that these things aren't so, then that means you don't have the right to sit up here and deny me the right to ask these questions and or to change the terms of this agreement. Now, if you don't answer each of these questions, then that means specifically with specificity and facts and conclusions of law, saying that you got the right to do this, if you, if you don't answer each question individually, indivisible with liberty and justice anyway if you don't answer each one of these questions individually then you consent to the entire agreement and you waive any and all rights and you agree to be in a stop from that means completely unable to do anything you agree to be in a stop from any and all claims associated with this matter so how, how, what you say oh you ain't gonna respond okay I'm just gonna wait the 10 days okay because you get 10 days now if you want 10 more days just got to respond in writing saying I want 10 more days need 10 more days okay you're still not gonna respond no problem I'm just gonna wait 10 days seven three two four one five nine eight oh ten ten days is up okay oh by the way here I told you I was gonna give you an opportunity to cure yeah it's in the contract so here's an opportunity to cure your fault you're at fault now so you need to prove that you didn't receive my first notice but you did receive it because you purposely didn't respond, but I had the post office document. They delivered it to your address. Here's your address right here. 
Know the sage and know the principal. Don't want to hear it. Okay. Oh, you ain't going to respond to the three-day notice either? Well, you got three days to prove that you didn't receive the first notice. Okay. All right. One, two, seventy-two. Okay, hours up. Okay, now look. We got a contract. I just need you to fulfill your obligation. Oh, you ain't gonna fulfill nothing? Okay, going to arbitration. Hey, arbitrator, I already let this fool know what we were doing. And this fool said, hey, we ain't doing nothing. We ain't gonna respond. We gonna ignore y'all. Oh, they gonna ignore us. We, they say they gonna ignore y'all. Well, don't worry about it. We got this. Hey, we told that you gonna ignore us. Well, you ignore us all you want, but here, we had we said in the hearing, all the parties agreed, so we said in the hearing. Now, if you got anything you want to say, showing up to the hearing. Oh, no, we're doing electronic, so anything you need to say, you put it in writing. That's right, put it all in writing. Hey, if you need an extension, we give that to you automatically. Okay, we just don't give extensions just to be given them, but we give it to you automatically. We just ain't going to extend it for years, but we will extend it if you give us a good cause. Okay. Oh, you ain't going to ask for nothing? You ain't even going to show up or nothing? Okay, that's on you. Peace out. Hey, they didn't show up, so don't worry about it. We're going to just go off of your paperwork and go off of their paperwork, and they didn't send us anything, so we, we're going to go off of what they didn't send us. Okay. I had the arbitrator issue an award for blah, 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 based on the following facts and conclusions and based on the evidence presented before me. I find the following, blah, 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 and awarded blah, 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 and signed as arbitrator. And then here's your tentative copy until we get you your certified copy. Okay, there's your certified copy. What do we do now? Oh, well, see, we can't tell you what to do because we're just the arbitration association, but you must follow the code. What code? The Federal Arbitration Act. The one that allows you to do this. It says that you must now get your award confirmed. Get it confirmed? Yeah, you can go into the court and tell them I need to get an arbitration award confirmed. What's your process? And they'll tell you what the process is. Every court has rules on con confirmation of arbitration award. Watch this. You sure you want me to watch this? It's a waterfall. Not the waterfall you more. Um, okay, I understand what you're saying. Hold on, y'all. Um... We were here. We're going to have to change our search engine on our website because we have um, Smoogle. And Smoogle is just not, man, Smoogle is not the thing to do. You want to create you a site called Smoogle? You go right ahead. I just came up with that. So you go right ahead and Smoogle your site, okay? But anyway, was it just a lie? Where is the love? See what I'm saying? See, the song is in my head. This is going to be very difficult. Never needed love. Until this way. This is... The song I dedicated to my best friend is the first song that I heard after his death. So it's Where Is The Love originally done by Roberta Flack. And then uh, Stephanie Mills redid the song. And she did it with his name was... Booker was the last name. I don't know. It wasn't Robert Booker. Okay. She did it with Robert Booker. Confirmation Arbitration. A-W-A-R-D. And then we're going to put in the word procedure because we're looking for California. Confirmation Arbitration Award. Thank you for correcting my spelling. The procedure for confirming an arbitration award is relatively straightforward. P pay attention, everybody. Pay attention. And it's necessary because the award cannot be enforced within the United States until the appropriate federal or straight state court confirms the award. The process to confirm an arbitrable arbitral award proceeds much faster than a regular lawsuit not true it's supposed to happen like a lawsuit but it doesn't happen like a lawsuit so all 
I didn't actually ask for arbitration award procedural guide, but I don't really care about the guide. Uh, we do CA. Enforcing an arbitration award in California. This is Gibson Dunn. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just for California. You can do this for every state. Confirmation of arbitration award. Now, it says in order to enforce the award, what I'm trying to tell you is don't enforce the award first. Go into court and get the contract enforced because the Supreme Court has held. I already have this document. You guys will see this document. It's in our files on our site. But hold on. Watch this so that I can show it to you. This is the Supreme Court in their unanimous decision. Okay, this is the name of the case. Henry Sheen Incorporated versus Archer and White Sales. Okay, this was on Searcherary. Okay, decided January 8, 2019. All we're interested in is this right here. Don't worry about the holy ground list. Get Get that language completely out of there. The exception to the arbitrability is inconsistent with the Federal Arbitration Act and this court's precedents. Precedent! I'm the president of the United... Not that precedent. Anyway, under the Act, arbitration is a matter of contract. Arbitration can only happen by via contract between the parties. So that's what the Act says. Under the Act, arbitration is a matter of contract. And the courts must enforce arbitration contracts according to their terms. This was decided in Renner Center a long time ago, y'all. The parties to such a contract may agree to have an arbitrator decide not only the merits of a particular dispute, but also the gateway question of arbitrability. Therefore, when the party's contract delegates the arbitrability question to an arbitrator, a court may not override the contract. Even if the court thinks, which, in other words, the court, it doesn't matter what the court thinks, that the arbitrability question or claim is wholly groundless. Why? That conclusion follows also from this court's precedent, not president, precedent in AT&T Technologies Incorporated versus communication workers. And this case was, I believe, 1982, 84, something like that. But you just got to keep up with the cases, y'all. Now, we don't, we're not concerned about that junk right there. We're concerned about the opinion of the court. Why? Because the decision was unanimous. And here is Judge Kavanaugh saying under the Federal Arbitration Act, the parties to a contract may agree that an arbitrator rather than the court will resolve disputes arising out of the contract. When a dispute arises, the party sometimes may disagree not only about the merits of the dispute, but also about the threshold arbitrability question, that is, whether their arbitration agreement applies to a particular dispute. Who decides the threshold arbitrability question? Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Those of you who have your arbitration and your contracts, the parties may sometimes disagree about the merits of the dispute, where it should or should not be had. This is even if it is an incarceration contract dealing with an incarcerated individual. The parties may disagree. However, pay attention. Under the Act, the Federal Arbitration Act, and this court's cases, Supreme Court precedent, the question of who decides arbitrability is itself a question of contract. Your contract acts as a plea agreement. It acts as an agreement between you and the government. This is what these people said. No, that's the wrong one. We got to go here. We got to go here. The United States consented to arbitration and the award made thereunder for the equitable relief of the parties and the United States are binding. Congress hereby expressly waives any defenses to the equitable relief awarded to the parties, beneficiaries and corporate beneficiaries by the arbitrator. Do you understand that, ladies and gentlemen? The reason why Congress waived it right because the United States entered into the binding agreement with the parties. 
they found that the agreement was binding between the parties and that the agreement contained an alternative dispute resolution clause which applies in both civil and criminal matters. This happened to have been a criminal matter. Congress says that it applied. Just that it really is that simple. So how do you get the award enforced? You utilize the bill and you utilize the private law and utilize the Supreme Court decision. That's your weapon. Now hold on. Like we said, get the contract in force first. So you get an award, and I want you to pay attention. The award validates the contract. The arbitration award, because only the arbitrator can determine the validity of a contract. You don't believe me? Okay, watch this. Uh, let's see if it's in here. I don't know if it's in this document, so let's do the fine. That's right here. I put in validity, but V-A-L, uh-oh, I put, sorry, I put V-I-L, validity, and it's not validity, val, 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 give me one second, we put in valid, shall be valid, irrevocable, and enforceable, saved upon such grounds as exist at law or in equity for the revocation of any contract. See, the written provisions in a contract evidencing a transaction involving commerce to settle by arbitration a controversy thereafter arising out of such contract shall be valid. So according to the Arbitration Act itself, if you have a written provision of your contract that involves commerce, the contract is valid. Why? Why is the contract, in, is, why is the contract valid? Because if it involves commerce, it involves a debt. And all debt... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going ahead of myself. Y'all just, y'all got to excuse me. Let's, let's do the debt thing so that you guys understand about debt, okay? <sighs> let's, we're going to talk about that part next, but we're going to do the debt thing so y'all can understand debt. We're going to come back to this too, all right? Because we already got a copy of this document. The 14th, uh, T-E-X-T. So we're going to go to Article 1 of the 14th Amendment, Section Number 4. Okay? That's what you want to pay attention to. You, we don't care about the other junk. We don't care about no citizens, and we don't care about none of that stuff. None of that stuff has anything to do with the Section 1 of the Federal Arbitration Act, which says that the contract shall be valid. It involves commerce, does it not? Why somebody I'm so in love with me Sorry, I told you That's what happens y'all When you're listening to jazz this way Now they ain't gonna like it at YouTube Wait a minute Where is I'm not looking for this junk right there I just want the 14th amendment Oh, that's what it is right there There's section 1, section 2 Section 3, we are concerned about Section 4. Sorry. Let's get Section 4 all the way up in front of y'all so y'all can see. Now pay attention. The validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for services in the suppression of insurrection and rebellion, shall not be questioned. But neither shall the United States or any other state assume to pay a debt. Now, we're not concerned about that. We're worried about the validity of a public debt shall not be questioned. Hey, buddy. So, what's the public debt? You didn't understand? You didn't understand what they just said. Hold on. Let me show you what they, the Supreme Court said, Congress said, in section number two. A written provision in a contract. Now, see, when you see me take out words from their junk, because this is a practice. This is, they're telling you what the, that other stuff is filler. You don't have to worry about that. That's what they're telling you. You'll hear me refer to that as filler. Okay? A contract evidencing a transaction involving commerce, 
well, who controls commerce? Is it not Congress? So if it involves commerce, it involves public policy, public monies, public commerce, public debt to settle by arbitration a controversy thereafter arising out of such contract shall be valid, irrevocable, and enforceable, set upon the grounds that exist at law or in equity for the revocation of any contract. Now, as long as you follow what the law allows for a, what is that stupid contract that we keep talking about, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, that unilateral contract. As long as you follow the provisions of the, provisions of the unilateral contract, nothing they can do. Now look, watch this. Under the Act, arbitration is a matter of contract, and the courts must enforce arbitration contracts according to their terms. The courts don't even get to determine whether the contract is valid or not. Why? Because only the parties may agree who determines the validity of their contract. And if they say it shall only be the arbitrator who determines that, there's nothing the courts can do. Watch this. To be sure, before referring the dispute to an arbitrator, the court determines whether valid arbitration agreement exists. But if a valid arbitration exists, and if the agreement delegates the arbitrability issue to an arbitrator, the court may not decide the arbitrability issue or the validity of the contract. Only that there is an arbitration clause in the contract. This is what the courts have said. We didn't say that. They said that. Archer White, people. Now, let's let's continue. Let's go to the next. I think there's only three. Okay, that's it. Just three validities. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. They don't have a cause, rhyme, or reason to ignore your arbitration or the arbitrability question. Why? Because... Only the arbitrator gets to determine that, and if the arbitrator issues an award, there's your prima facie evidence that the arbitrator has determined the contract to be valid, the Federal Arbitration Act determines the contract to be valid, and the arbitrator has determined the arbitrability question, that it was arbitrable. Or arbitral! Okay, there you go. So go about following the procedures in your state for sorry it's another one of them song that you know that I know my feelings for you Freddie Jackson there's something that he wanted to say all right notes this note summarized the basic steps for converting an arbitrable award into a court judgment into court judgments in California now ladies and gentlemen here's the process they're giving you the process and showing you the California code hold on now Ho hold on now ours is based on federal but this is talking about the procedure so let's find out what the procedure is real quick we, we got a couple of minutes don't y'all got a couple of minutes I got a couple of minutes okay so since you got a couple of minutes we're gonna take a couple of minutes let's go right here like the US federal government California has well-established policies favoring arbitration as an efficient alternative to litigation standing alone however contractual arbitrable arbitral awards as distinguished from arbitral awards resulting from court ordered judicial arbitrations have only the force and effect of of a contract between the parties to the arbitration until they are judicially confirmed that is in force. This note describes the process of enforcing contractual arbitrable awards in California. Now the statutory framework, it's gonna give you a little bit of history. It's gonna say in California contractual arbitral awards can be enforced under the California Arbitration Act or the Federal Arbitration Act. We're going under the Federal Arbitration Act. Now notice this, 9 U.S.C. 1 through 16, 200 through 208, and 300 to 107. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't even know about 200 to, uh, 201 to 208 and 301 to 307, but we're going to have to look that up in our next video because we got we to gotta know everything about arbitration. And I promise you, I ain't never looked this up, but I know it's going to say the same thing as the original. I know that for a fact. Okay, I know it for a fact. 
Hold on now. We going God, I don't want to do Google. We going to copy cuz I ain't doing Google. Mm, mm. I ain't doing Google. You know, uh frack Google. The best way I can say it cuz I don't do Google. Now this might still be attached to Google. Yeah, this is a Google search. So, we're going to do Bing. We're going to do B I N G O. Yeah, I got to get off of Google cuz we don't want Google. We don't want Google. Oh, Okay, I know what uh, 201 is. That's international. Enforcement of Foreign Arbitral Awards, Inter-America Convention of International. So those are the international ones. Okay, no, that's okay. We, we, we knew about the international because guess what, y'all? We have a couple of international ones ourselves that we're about to put the hammer on. We tried to tell people, y'all don't understand, Supreme Court of the United States of America, the, the hound dogs, they said you ain't nothing but a, they, they, they say, hey, don't want to mess with them fools because they using all but All right, California Arbitration Act governs the enforcement of arbitral awards rendered in or outside of California. The CAA, California Arbitration Act, generally applies to the enforcement of awards that do not involve interstate commerce. You're going to find all awards involve commerce. Don't worry about the interstate junk. Just worry about commerce because Congress regulates commerce interstate or out of state or intrastate or that otherwise fall outside the scope of the federal statutes. Parties can also agree to apply the California Arbitration Act's enforcement procedures in their arbitration agreement. Not in ours. California outlines procedures for international commercial arbitrations that take place in California in 1996 California International Arbitration and Conciliation Act okay the California International Arbitration Conciliation Act does not outline procedures for judicial confirmation of arbitration awards therefore the awards rendered pursuant to the California International <sighs> Arbitration and Conciliation Act must be enforced under separate statu uh, state or federal statute. It's the federal statute because it's an international claim that involves commerce. How do you know it involves commerce? Ladies and gentlemen, understand what the act is. It is the International Arbitration and Conciliation Act. It is international, of course, and it's an award that awards money. Of course, it involves commerce. That's federal. Now, let's go back here so that we can do this. Just my imagination, y'all, just for a second. The California Judicial Arbitration Law and the California Rules of Court require judicial arbitrations of certain civil disputes. And now, you see, it said of certain civil disputes. That's because it's judicial arbitration. Enforcement of awards rendered through judicial arbitration differs from enforcement of awards rendered through contractual arbitration and is not addressed in this note. Yet yeah, judicial arbitration is separate because pay attention. Even the courts get involved in arbitration. But they also want to dictate when they will and when they will not. They want to be the judge of that. And you're saying, those of you who have the incarceration ones, as Congress said, note they don't get to make that determination. The Supreme Court says that only the arbitrator gets to make that determination and the parties give the arbitration, the arbitrator the authority under the arbitration clause of their contract. Now, Chapter 1 of the FAA, Federal Arbitration Act, broadly governs, get out of here. See, it won't let me come up and show you the lie. The enforcement of the arbitrable awards rendered pursuant to a written contract that evidences a transaction involving interstate or foreign commerce or maritime transactions. Okay, all it has to be is commerce, people. All commerce is interstate commerce. For the FAA to apply the enforcement of the arbitrable awards, the parties to the arbitration agreement need not have intended interstate activity when they entered into the contract, nor must the dispute arise from part of a transaction that involves interstate commerce. Did you see that? For the arbitrator to have 
powers under this. It does not have to involve interstate commerce. It just has to involve commerce, people. Some courts, including courts in California, interpret Section 9 of the FAA as requiring the parties to consent to judicial confirmation in their arbitration agreement. Now, again, you don't have to agree to judicial confirmation, but we are agreeing in our contracts to courts of original jurisdiction, not just any court. The court would have to document that it's sitting under original jurisdiction. And in our future contracts, we're going to make it equitable jurisdiction. Only a court sitting in equity can confirm this award. In equity. I know. I'm a, I'm a bad mother. Shut you. Anyway. Nothing. Noting that unlike the California Arbitration Act, the Federal Arbitration Act provides for judicial confirmation arbitration awards only upon the consent of the parties. However, several courts have held that specific consent language is unnecessary because the parties to an arbitration implicitly consent to judicial confirmation, holding the provisions of the in the agreement that arbitrators' determination would be final and binding along with both parties' participation in the arbitration process was sufficient under the FAA to confer the authority to the district court to confirm the award, even in the absence of explicit agreements for judicial enforcement of the award. That's why we have to be explicit in our agreement, because it doesn't say that we have to have it confirmed by the district court. It just says the court in the district, but it does not say the district court. Okay. Hold on now. I know what they're saying. Chapter 2 of the Federal Arbitration Act governs the enforcement of arbitral awards rendered pursuant to the New York Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitral Awards, New York Convention. To enforce an arbitral award under the New York Convention, we don't care. We'll care about that in the future. Because right now, it's just my imagination. Now, most arbitration award, um, it says a petition for judicial confirmation must be filed no later than 10 days after, but no, uh, no earlier than 10 days after and no later than four years from the date of service of a signed copy of the award to petitioners. So even though the Federal Arbitration Act allows an individual to have their award confirmed within a year, see, under the Chapter 1 of the Federal Arbitration Act, the petition for judicial confirmation must be filed within one year of the date of the arbitral award is made. Under the New York and Panama Conventions, Chapter 2 and 3 of the FAA, to petition for judicial confirmation of the foreign award must occur within three years of the award. So international, three years. If you do it on a state level, you have a longer time than on a federal level, even though you got it done federally. You feel me? This is where you guys need to do your next set of studies. Become an expert, people, in arbitration. This should be your best friend. Your best friend. Now, again, both the FAA and CAA could apply to the enforcement of an arbitral award. So you can do it federal or state, just like I just said. The substantive provision of FAA preempts conflicting provisions in CAA. That's right. FAA will always take seniority over state arbitration acts. Where there is federal subject matter jurisdiction, parties may enforce their arbitrable awards in either a California state court or a California federal court. In such a situation, the substantive provisions of the FAA will apply regardless of whether the enforcement is in state or federal court. So even the state court will have to adhere to the FAA. But consistent with traditional choice of law principles, the procedural provisions of the FAA do not preempt California procedures in the California State Court. It is therefore important to carefully consider the difference between state and federal procedures before seeking judicial confirmation. The following provisions, which California courts have deemed to be procedural, vary by state and federal statutes and may affect whether a party chooses to initiate enforcement process in state or federal court. So let's see what the procedural issues is. Y'all don't mind, do y'all? And well, then we're going to get on and let y'all get back to your lives. Because people have been wondering, what do I do after I get an arbitration award? Under the CAA, California Arbitration Act, Consent of the parties is not required to seek confirmation. Just that simple. You don't need to have the other party's consent. 
this point does not have a uniform answer under the federal procedure. That's right, because any party may seek confirmation of the award. For example, some courts interpret Section 9 of Chapter 1 of the Federal Arbitration Act as permitting judicial confirmation of arbitral award only where there is explicit party consent. And that's a lie. The Arbitration Act says either party may seek confirmation. Consent to confirmation is not required under the New York Convention. A more detailed discussion on this point is found under statutory framework. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain about the foreign, the New York Convention section. What happened is we have a contract with a foreign entity and they have defaulted. We sent them their three day notice, they have defaulted. When we go to arbitration, our arbitration agreement says that the other party weighs rights and consent to whatever we choose. Because ain't no woman like the one I got is playing in the background, y'all. That's why. Choice of law. The parties to an arbitration agreement that would otherwise be governed by the federal statute generally may choose to have their award enforced under state arbitration law. Ladies and gentlemen, we have elected not to have our contracts and or the Arbitration Act govern under federal statute. We say that the federal statute must yield to common law and the rules of common law. That's what the contract says. Federal and state courts are, however, split on the effect of broadly worded choice of law provisions. The federal courts have held that parties wanting to opt out of the FAA must specify the controlling state arbitration law in their arbitration clause, not through a generic choice of law provision. Some California state courts have given, sorry, make sure, effect the broadly worded choice of law provisions holding that those provisions incorporate California arbitration rules into the contract. For more information on blah blah blah, don't care. So let me make sure you guys understand what our contracts do and the contracts that we place on the internet as a template for individuals to govern off of. It remains fair at all times because that is what's necessary. And our contract allows permit that the parties may only have their contract and arbitration enforced under common law and that the court can only grant the award under its original jurisdiction capacity. Now, most state courts have no original jurisdiction capacity, which is why you must send it to the Supreme Court of that state, asking them to assign it to a court under its original jurisdiction, as agreed upon by the parties that the arbitration award will be confirmed under original jurisdiction, and this court has original jurisdiction, and it will have to delegate that responsibility to one of the lower courts. Just that simple. And federal court, the federal courts have original jurisdiction of matters that are, according to, if you look at the award, it says the matter in controversy is greater than $75,000. If it's greater than $75,000, it is a federal matter. And it is supposed to be had under original jurisdiction. However, there is another court of original jurisdiction, and that is a federal court. And it is a federal district circuit court of appeals. So let's do that so you guys can see. I'm right here, and I'm just going to switch pages like that. Hold on. And then we're going to stop all of this. So I even spelled that wrong. Come on now. Federal District, Federal Circuit hears appeals. I, it's the United States Court of Appeals for the District. No, we're not looking for that court. Not looking, United States Court of Appeals for District of Columbia Circuit. Nope, United States Court of Appeals. Uh-uh, see, it's, it's saying for this year, Columbia. Federal District Circuit Court of Appeals.
the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit. This is the appeals court that come from all federal district courts. Okay, this is an original jurisdiction court, ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't know about it, now you know. Okay, I brought this information to the attention of several. This court right here is an Article 3 court. This is not an Article 1, an Article 2, or an Article 4 court. This court was initially set up in 1982, and it was established under Article 3. This is a court of original jurisdiction. This is a real court. Sorry, according to, pay attention, according to the Act. The other courts are administrative. This court is, according to the act, not administrative. Whether they act as if they're not administrative, I can't tell you this or that. This court, and if you look at all the incarceration and the infant estate contracts, they involve contracts with the United States. So let's see the jurisdiction that this court has. Okay, the Federal Circuit is unique among the 13 Circuit Courts of Appeals. It has nationwide jurisdiction, doesn't matter what state you're in, in a variety of subject areas, including trade, international trade, government contracts. Pay attention. Government contracts. Anyway, certain money claims against the United States, federal personnel, veterans benefits, public safety officers, benefit claims, Appeals to the court come from all federal district courts. The United States Court of Federal Claims, the United States Court of International Trade, and the United States Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims. Ladies and gentlemen, you had not heard of this court. The United States Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit. You have not heard of this court because they don't get a lot of recognition. Why? Because they want you to go to those other rinky-dink administrative courts so do your research find out a little bit more about this court get to know who they are we'll continue to update you on what your options are hey I told you those of you who stay around to the end of the video you always find out something new and something exciting and something very very interesting so let's shut all this down so that we can talk all right ladies and gentlemen here's something that you can do if you have a contract, you've done the arbitration, and you've gotten your award, what is the first thing I would do if I were you? I would take my contract, and I would specifically, pay attention, go into court, especially if it deals with a mortgage, and we're talking about mortgages right now, especially if it dealt with a mortgage, and I would file an unlawful detainer if I have been out of my home for less than a year, I would go in and file an unlawful detainer against all occupants in the home. Now, hold on. Hold on now. I want you all to stay with me. If I'm still in my home and I decided, hey, I'm going to do one of those contracts with my bank because I know they did that internal credit thing with me. And uh -uh, I know they ain't got no claim against me. So I'm going to download that contract and I'm going to send it out. I'm going to get my arbitration done. Okay. You can do an unlawful detainer on your own property for all other occupants but you say with the exception of yourself and the relatives and the people who live there that you know that you authorize but all other occupants you're gonna serve notice on the property we were doing this before ladies and gentlemen but we're gonna do this with the arbitration award they didn't like what we were doing when we were doing it before when we were serving notice on all other occupants and we were in possession of the home they hated that. Well, they can't stop it now because the arbitrator has just awarded us and the contract agrees that the property is ours. And so in that, you will put forth the contract and the agreement. You don't have to put forth the bank's name. The contract says the property is yours. And in order to solidify that property, you are doing something similar to quiet title, but not a quiet title. You're simply doing an unlawful detainer action. By the way, they can't come in and say anything. Why? Because the contract it stops them if they are in default so if you have defaulted them and they are in default and some of you are going to try not to send the letters to them you're going to try to pretend that you sent something you can't do that ladies and gentlemen because if you lie it will come back 
to haunt you. Look, everything hidden is uncovered. No matter where you live, I don't care what your philosophy is, I don't care what you think. Everything hidden always gets uncovered. Ain't no reason for you to be sitting out there in the middle of the street naked. Talking about, well, I thought I had everything covered. Okay? Ain't no reason. So let me tell you what you do. Do everything by the book. So that when the time comes and they reopen that book, they'll see that you're already there. It's called being grandfathered in. And so when they correct all of the wrongs that's going to be done, because some of you are not going to be successful, they're going to rule against some of you. You know that. I know that. But you need to hold on. Hold on. You need to have faith. You need to understand that no matter what stupid thing they do, it will come back on them. Can't you see the system setting itself up? They've already set themselves up for failure. And now they're panicking because they see you guys are starting to come their way. But wait till they hit that stampede right about June. Because the people who are doing their arbitrations now, who are just starting the process of the contracts now, if I'm already in a home, you better believe. People say, when should I stop paying my mortgage? When should I stop paying? You better keep paying that junk. You better keep paying that junk till you got it securely in hand, and then you go back and get all those funds back because now it's extortion. Because you have the arbitration award. You got to remember, the Supreme Court said, and you need to pay attention, I'm not saying this. The Supreme Court said that your agreement and the arbitration award is valid. You're not looking for confirmation. You're looking for validity. The Supreme Court said as long as the parties agree to arbitration, then whatever the, arbitration, the arbitrator says, that the contract says, that the arbitrator's decision is binding, then whatever the, arbitration, the arbitrator says is law. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are working on the contract for the SAPPAC Q that we talked about, or the Q Pact, that will be a completely different affidavit. Okay, by the way, those of you who have the affidavit that you get off of our website, it's not this affidavit. Your affidavit is completely different. Okay, the affidavit on the website does not say this stuff here. Okay, because this is different. This is only for our SAPPAC clients. You know, and the first time I just noticed this, I just noticed that that word was um, spelled wrong. Oh, well, we won't need it because some of this will, will be taken away because it's a repeat. We'll be condensing this document. It's about 17 pages. I'm believing it's going to be roughly about 9 to 12 pages when we finish. But we'll have a lot more than it had before and we'll condense a lot of the information. Can't show it to y'all because this is only going to be for the SAPPAC Q clients. Now, pay attention. Those former SAPPACers, those current SAPPACers, please understand you're already protected. You don't need this. Okay? Just that simple. You don't have to worry about this. This is for the new people coming on. Well, can I do that one as well? You can do this one because these individuals won't be put into the SAPPAC group to where we back up their SAP packs with collateral. They won't be put in the same type of system. But we will let you guys know. I'm working on it now. It was supposed to have been done last week, but if you notice, it hasn't been. Why? Because it's a language thing. I have to go over every word of the contract. I have to protect the interests of all of the people that's associated with this. So you're just going to have to bear with us. And those of you who have been patient and understanding that this information is not easy. It's not easy to explain this to everyone. The same thing that you've been experiencing, you see how long it's been taking you to grasp some of this information? Well, just imagine the people who are there trying to help with your paperwork. They're trying to help with SACOM. They're having to grasp this information as well, and so it's not as easy for them to grasp it, and it's not as easy for you either. Well, we want to thank you for taking the time for watching this video. Oh, and some of you are confusing the Eon channel with SACOM and SICCOM and all these other comms. Ladies and gentlemen, do not confuse Eon with them because Eon is not a part of them. But I got an email and they said Eon. You can get an email and they can say Peon and Beon and Fion and Guyon. I don't care. When we say that Eon is not affiliated with SACOM and SACOM is not affiliated with Eon, we mean that seriously. We don't care how you want to imagine it, how you want to create it, how you want to make it think. When we say it, that is just the way it is until we change that. 
Is it going to be changing? Nope, not going to be changing anytime soon because Eon and SACOM are not the same. But some people want to just and see. Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you all have a good day, have a good night, have a good afternoon, have a good time, have a good whatever it is. Just let it be good. And I'm going to say goodbye. Goodbye, y'all. Adios. Arrivederci. Sayonara.